Okay, it's a pleasure to welcome everybody to the second day of the workshop and to introduce our first speaker for today, Jean-Stefan Koskevirta, uh, joining us from Japan, where it's now midnight, I suppose. Um, and he will talk about partial Hase invariants on the flag space of Shimura varieties. Yes, uh, thank you, Fred, for the uh, introduction. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, the organizers for um, inviting me. Uh, merci beaucoup aux, aux organisateurs pour uh, l'organisation de l'atelier. Uh, so I will um, speak uh, about um, joint work with uh, Wushi Golving and Naoki Mai uh, on partial Hesse invariance um, on flight space of Shimura varieties. So um, let me first uh, remind uh, you some um, some things that Feynman explained uh, yesterday in his talk. Um, so uh, first, I uh, should warn uh, everybody uh, that there's a slight uh, issue about conventions. So um, in the classical setting, uh, the modular form uh, generally has a weight which is a non-negative um, integer. But so in this talk, the convention is uh, uh, opposite. So the, the weight will be a non-positive integer. Um, and so, um, for Hilbert modular forms, let's take uh, E over Q, uh, totally real quadratic extension, um, and uh, consider the group G, uh, the sub subgroup of the veil restriction of, um, of GL2, or E to Q, um, defined by the condition that the determinant is in, uh, is in GMQ. And so we have a Hilbert surface, uh, SHK, attached to it. Uh, over Q with level K, uh, some fixed uh, subgroup of G of AF. And in this example, um, I'll, I will just take a, a, a prime number P, which is uh, inert in E, um, and assume that K is a hyperspecial at P. So yesterday, uh, Paiman discussed a ramified case, but so in this talk, everything will be good reduction. So it's uh, simpler in this way. Um, but we try to consider more general uh, groups. Um, so we have good reduction at P, so um, there is a smooth um, canonical model over ZP, we'll call it uh, S, uh, curly SK. Um, and so a modular form uh, of weight uh, K1, uh, K2, uh, for some, from some integers K1 and K2, um, is a, a section of uh, omega one power minus k1, and so omega 2 power minus k2, um, where omega 1 and omega 2 are the, the direct summons of the Hodge bundle. So this, this uh, omega is uh, the Hodge bundle, which is given by the uh, universal abelian variety. So, uh, so first of all, so if you look over the complex numbers uh, over C, so the, the weight of a non-zero uh, Hilbert modular form lies in this uh, what Feynman called as a standard cone, or uh, I think ST stands for standard, um, which is a pairs of uh, non uh, non positive um, integers. But so if you look in characteristic P, uh, so Andretta and Gorin uh, constructed uh, modular forms with ha which have a um, weight outside of this cone. So uh, they constructed the uh, modular forms H1 and H2 of weight minus P1 and 1 minus P. So there is a positive component here. Um, and um, so the, the, if you look at the vanishing loci of H1 and H2, uh, so let's call it Z1 and Z2. So these are uh, the two equidal out strata of co-dimension one in the, in the Shimura variety. Um, and that's why uh, H1 and H2 are called partial Hesse invariants. So because if you, so if you take the product of these two forms, you get the classical Hasse invariant, uh, which is a, which has weight one minus p and one minus p. Um, okay. So uh, as uh, yesterday, let's let's define uh, the Hasse cone as the cone generated by one minus p and minus p one over the non-negative um, rationals. Uh, okay, and so the, the theorem of uh, Diamond and uh, Kasai is the following, so um, very vaguely stated. So uh, if H is a non-zero modular form, 
Hilbert modular form, it is divisible by H1 or H2 until it, its weight enters a certain minimal cone, uh, C min, uh, that I will uh, show you in the next slide. And uh, the direct corollary of this result, um, that so we also proved uh, uh, with Goldring using uh, different techniques, uh, is the following. So uh, if you have a non-zero modular form, uh, then its weight uh, lies in in the Hasse cone, is is spanned over the over the rationals, non-negative rationals by uh, minus p one and one minus p. So here is the picture. So uh, here I I, I um, uh, we have H one, so the one of the Hasse invariants, partial Hasse invariants, and here we have H two, and they span uh, the weights of these forms span the Hasse cone. Uh, so here the, the dotted lines. This, uh, they define the standard cone. So this is what happens in characteristic zero. Uh, and here the, the blue cone is the, this minimal cone uh, that was um, defined yesterday. Okay, so in this talk, I will not really uh, talk about the minimal cone, even though uh, we would want to have uh, some generalization of what this is in the, in the general setting. Uh, but um, so uh, I will uh, only study the the generalizations, the possible generalizations of uh, the, the corollary, and that is the, the span part of the result. Um, so, uh, so we want to study uh, the following questions. So um, first of all, uh, what about the possible weights of non-zero automorphic forms in characteristic? And um, secondly, is it true that all weights, all possible weights are spanned over the non-negative rationals? by the weights of partial Hasse invariance, or uh, if, 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 not, uh, if this is not the right uh, object, then maybe some, some finite list of other natural automorphic forms. Okay, so some, some remarks uh, that we, we noticed uh, by studying the, the example of uh, Hilbert modular forms. So that, uh, so more, more weights uh, appear in characteristic P than in characteristic zero, right? So this was, uh, here in this example, right? So we have the Hasse cone, and so the dotted lines are the characteristic zero. Uh, um, so, uh, but so in this example, everything was a line bundle. Okay, but so if we want to study um, this question more generally, we have to work with automorphic vector bundles instead. Or we have to allow uh, more general vector bundles. Uh, and also, it can happen that uh, there is a unique uh, equilateral stratum of poly dimension one. So, for example, this happens in the case of the Schumacher varieties. So, in this case, there is no good notion of partial Hasse invariant because there is only one stratum. So, there is only one possible um, Hasse invariant, basically. So, what what should we do in this case? Okay. So, let me set some uh, notations before I move forward. So, um, about Schumacher varieties. So, let's take uh, G X to be a Schumacher datum of H type. Uh, so, in particular, G is a reductive connected group uh, over Q. Uh, and uh, by choosing some point in X, um, we, we obtain a co-character mu uh, of, uh, of, of G uh, over the complex numbers. Um, and uh, so, this, this co-character gives rise to a, a parabolic subgroup P uh, in, in GC. Uh, and the uh, Levy subgroup L, which is the centralizer of the, the co-character, basically. Um, okay, and so let's fix uh, some uh, some level K, um, and uh, we consider the Shimura variety SHK of level K, uh, which is defined over some some number field E, so the reflex field, and uh, fix a prime number P of good reduction. Uh, so K is a uh, is hyper special at P and uh, fix some place uh, in E above P. And so by, by results of Kissin and, uh, and Vazio, um, there is a, a canonical smooth uh, model over the ring of integers uh, of, the, of the completion at V of E. Um, that's denoted by curl ESK uh, of, the, of the Shimura variety. And so, I will denote by SK uh, the special fiber of the Shimura variety. So hey, here, uh, kappa V is a, 
is the residue field of E at uh, B. Uh, okay, and so uh, I will use a, a slight abusive notation. Um, I, I will do a slight abusive notation. So, um, so here the group G uh, leads to ZP because we have a good reduction, so we have some, some reductive group over ZP. And similarly, P and L, they lift to a ZP bar. Um, and so we can reduce mod P, uh, but I will use the same, same notation. So I write again G, P, and L for the mod P reduction of these groups. And uh, finally, uh, note that uh, SK uh, carries a, a natural P torsor. This could be true also for the for the integral model. Um, so just to to give you an example, what this p torsor is. So let's take the the Ziegel uh, case, which will come up uh, later uh, a few times. So this is the case when uh, G is the symplectic group, the general symplectic group GSP to G, where G is uh, some, some integer. Um, and let's SK be AG. So this is the the, the, the Shimura variety that parameterizes uh, a billion varieties of rank G together with a, um, polar, a polarization which has degree prime to P and uh, some uh, KP level structure, some level structure outside P. Okay, and uh, so let's denote by A the universal abelian variety over SK uh, and uh, write M for the Doran cohomology of the abelian variety over SK. So this is a locally free uh, sheaf of rank 2G over, over SK. And this has, uh, has a Hodge filtration, omega, uh, where omega is a locally free uh, module of rank G. And uh, so the, the, I didn't say it here, but so the, the polarization uh, also induces uh, a, a, um, a symplectic pairing non-degenerate sym symplectic pairing on M. Um, uh, and uh, okay, so, so here we, this filtration um, gives, a, gives us a, a P torsor basically on, on the Shimura variety. Okay, and so from this, um, we have uh, this P torsor and so we obtain a functor V, so from rep P, so this is a category of representations of P, algebraic representations, two vector bundles on the Shimura variety, because we, we can just apply the P torsor to any representation. Um, and so in particular, in particular, um, we can do this for rep L. So the rep L is the, the full subcategory of rep P of representations, which are trivial on the unipotent radical. Um, and uh, so we obtained uh, this construction. So let's fix uh, a maximal torus T in L and uh, some Borel subgroup uh, B containing T and contained in P. Um, ah, sorry, there is some, what oh, happened here? Uh, oh, this, this denotes the category of vector bundles on the Shimura variety SK. I don't know what happened, there is, a, there is, a, uh, there is some line that appeared on my, on my screen. Okay, anyway, so, um, so let's write uh, BL um, for the intersection of B and uh, L. All right, um, so this is a Borel subgroup in, in L. So now let's take some, some character lambda um, yeah, of T and let uh, V of lambda be the induced representation from uh, BL to L of, uh, of lambda. So this is now a, an, L, an L representation. And by uh, this construction here uh, above, we, we get a, a vector bundle uh, purely V of lambda on the the Shimura variety SK. And so we call sections of V of lambda automorphic forms of weight lambda. So the, I will use this terminology in this talk. Um, okay, and so uh, this functor V uh, clearly preserves the rank. I mean, so I'm just looking at the definition. So if you have a, a, a representation of dimension N, then the, we get a vector bundle of rank N. Uh, so so characters of L correspond to line bundles on the Shimura variety by, by this functor. Uh, and also note that if we have a, a character of, uh, of T, um, lambda, which is not L dominant, then uh, V of lambda is zero because this induced representation is, is zero as well. So uh, when we speak about V of lambda, 
for some character uh, of t, always assume uh, that it's L, L dominant. Right. Okay, so the, the question is um, that, uh, the following. So for which characters lambda is um, H0 of uh, SK tensor FP bar V of lambda non zero? So for which uh, weights uh, are, are there non zero automorphic forms? Right. So, um, so this, this depends on, on the level. So, um, so you can see this already on, for, the, for the modular curve, basically. This, this, uh, the answer to this question depends on, on the level. However, so let's write CK of FP bar, um, the subset of uh, characters of T, uh, where um, H0 SK tensor FP bar of V of lambda is non-zero. Okay, so we can show that this is actually a cone, so it's stable by addition in, uh, in characters of T. So it's a, a commutative monoid, if you want. Um, okay, so this depends on K, this, this is clear. However, if we take the, the cone generated by this over the non-negative uh, rationals, then we can show that this is actually independent of K. So uh, as illustrated in the result of Diamond and Kasei, this was not depending on the level as this was, all, it was all, all, always the, the cone generated by one uh, minus p and uh, minus p1. Okay, so then we can ask this question over c just to, to compare. So instead of uh, taking fp bar, we could uh, work uh, with the generic fiber. Uh, and then similarly, this vector bundle makes sense and we can define a cone ck of c. Uh, and then, so here the answer should, uh, I mean, here I, I put some, um, I mean, this, it's not completely obvious. Uh, it's not completely uh, settled, this question, but uh, the answer should be given as follows. So uh, it's the set of uh, lambda in uh, characters of T, which satisfy the following. So um, the lambda is, uh, is, is non-negative with respect to the, to, the, um, to the roots of L, to the positive roots of L, but is, has a, has a non-positive scalar product with respect to the to the, to the other um, positive roots. Okay, so um, this is not always true. I, I mean, this is not um, uh, always, um, it, it, it hasn't been proved anywhere, but um, this is basically what, what we should expect um, based on uh, results of uh, Griffiths and, uh, and Schmidt. Um, if, if, if we look at their paper, um, this is basically uh, what, what can be extracted. And so this is a very reasonable guess. But so as we, as, as I said, I'm, I'm more interested in the FP bar uh, situation. Okay, so uh, also we can show that uh, the cone over the complex numbers is always contained in the cone uh, over FP bar. So the, this uh, comes from a, a mod P reduction argument, basically. Right. So uh, then let me talk about uh, so the fact space. So this is a convenient tool I want to introduce. So, so we have this P torso on, on SK, and so we can divide by the Borel B, and we obtain a, a P mod B vibration. So we have a, some, some uh, scheme flag K, uh, which maps to SK, and the, the fibers of this map uh, are uh, isomorphic to P mod B. So uh, for as a, as an example, so let's take the uh, Ziegel Schimmer variety uh, AG, so for some, some integer G. So in this case, we know that so AG parameterizes abelian varieties with some uh, polarization. And uh, in this case, flag K parameterizes um, abelian varieties with polarization and, and a level structure, but also endowed with a, a flag F. So F is a full flag in omega in the Hodge filtration. So this, this uh, flag space was introduced by Ekedal and Van der Heer in the case of uh, Ziegel uh, Shimura varieties. Um, all right, but, but it exists uh, in, in general. So now if we take some, some character lambda in T, uh, then there is a natural line bundle L of lambda on the flag space, flag K. And so what we did before is, so we had some, some character lambda in T and we induced it to get a representation of L. And then we applied this functor to get a vector bundle on the Shimura variety. 
but so actually we can go the other way. So from this character of T, we can uh, apply L and we get a line bundle on the flag space. And then we can push forward by, by pi, and this, this gives a commutative diagram. Right, um, so now we have this uh, geometric object flag K, uh, which has a, a family of line bundles L of lambda for, for lambda characters of T. Um, and so, so this is useful because um, since we are working with line bundles now instead of vector bundles, we can speak about the vanishing loci and we can talk about divisors of sections and, and so forth. Uh, and furthermore, so um, because um, so we have the, this, this commutative uh, diagram, uh, the, the 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 global sections of V of lambda over S K are coincide with the global sections of L of lambda over the flag space. And this would be true actually if I replace zero by some higher higher cohomology groups, because so the the direct images of pi uh, vanish. So so we have the this identity. Right. So, uh, so recall that on the on the Shimura variety there is a um, you could have all stratification. Okay, so for example, if uh, we're looking at uh, the Z ball Shimura variety, uh, this stratification is given by isomorphism classes of the P torsion of the abelian variety. Um, and uh, so in this case, so the co-dimension one equidad all strata are in bijection with um, the, the simple roots uh, which are not in L. Okay, so the complement of simple roots of L in simple roots. Um, but so similarly, there is a stratification on the flag space, like K. So, and, and this time this stratification is, is indexed by the whole wave group W. Um, uh, so for example, uh, in the case of uh, Ziegel Schimmer varieties, um, so it is given by the relative position of the flag and its uh, modification by Ferschibung. So there is a way to, to modify this flag by uh, applying uh, Ferschibung, and then we take the relative position and we get some element in W, and this tells you in which stratum you are. And so if we only look at the co-dimension one strata, um, then uh, these correspond to the, um, basically to the, um, to the um, simple roots. Okay, so, the, the, so there are more co-dimension one strata uh, on the flag space than here, right? Because, I mean, this could be very small, this complement, whereas here it's always, uh, it's always lambda, uh, delta, sorry. Um, okay, and so uh, just to note, so in the example of uh, Daimon and Kasai, uh, this does not appear because uh, the flag space actually coincides with uh, the Shimura variety. So there is no difference between Shimura variety and flag space. Uh, okay, and so let's define a flag partial Hasse invariant as a section of L of lambda, uh, some, some line bundle L of lambda over flag K, whose vanishing locus is a unique flag stratum. So it's a stratum in the, in the flag space, Z alpha for some, some uh, uh, simple root alpha. Okay, and just, just uh, to, um, as a remark, uh, so we also have this equidad all stratification on, on, on SK. So there is a slight, um, maybe a slight confusion between these two. Um, so on SK, we also have, uh, for example, a line bundle omega, uh, which is the determinant of the Hodge vector bundle, which also can be written as V of lambda omega for some character lambda omega in character of L. Um, and so a mu ordinary Hasse invariant, H mu, this is a, a section of a line bundle omega uh, to some power m, which vanishes exactly on the complement of uh, the unique open equidad or stratum in the Shimura variety. And so we have this, this uh, mu ordinary Hasse invariant downstairs on the Shimura variety, and we can pull it back upstairs on the flag space by taking pi upper star H mu. Uh, and it's, it's possible that this is a flag partial Hasse invariant, but it's not always true. So there is this, um, and I mean, both uh, notions uh, use the term Hasse invariant, but we have to, to be um, careful on which space we are, uh, basically not to confuse these two notions. Okay. All right, so now let's uh, do some, some group theory, um, because that's what it helps. Uh, so for example here, uh, just I wanted to to note that so here this flag partial has invariant and the mu ordinary has invariant 
it may um, I, we may want to um, prove that uh, these do not depend on the level or they they commute with a level change of level and this is uh, some hard work but uh, actually doing uh, using this uh, other method makes it possible to um, to have a canonical way of constructing these uh, invariants and it, it with, which commutes with levels uh, so um, so first of all, so if we have a, a pair of G mu, where G is a reductive group over FP and mu is a, a co-character uh, over FP bar of G, then uh, King, Gedon, and Sigler attach a finite smooth stack G zip mu over FP bar. Um, so, um, and, and, and Zhang, Zhang, uh, Chao Zhang sh uh, showed that um, there is a smooth surjective map. Uh, so, uh, well, some other authors uh, showed surjectivity. Um, map uh, zeta from SK, uh, well, SK tensor FP bar actually, I should be um, here, uh, I should uh, tensor with FP bar to the stack of GZIPs. And the fibers of this map uh, are exactly the Egdar alt strata. Okay, and uh, similarly, there is a, a flag version of uh, the stack of uh, GZIPs. So I call it a GZIP flag, like this. And, and we have exactly the, a similar picture. So here we had the flag space over the Shimura variety, and the Shimura, uh, Shimura variety maps to the stack of GZIPs by this map, uh, smooth map uh, zeta. And similarly, there is a, a flag version of the stack of GZIPs called GZIP flag. Uh, and, and there is a, a Cartesian diagram like this. Okay. Um, and so uh, basically we can think of these objects on, on this side as group theoretical analogs of the Shimura variety and the, the flag space of the Shimura variety. Right? And, and, they, and they have uh, very similar features. Uh, for example, the stratifications that we have here, so the equilateral stratification and the flag stratification, they also exist on, on this side. And similarly, the, the family of vector bundles, so uh, V of lambda that I defined on the Shimura variety and, and the line bundles L of lambda on the flag space, they also exist here. So this is what I explain in, in, in the next slide. Um, so here we have, um, uh, so again, I, I, I repeated this diagram here. Uh, and so similarly, so before we, what we had is this exterior diagram here. So the characters of T go to line bundles on the flag space. And here are representations of L go to vector bundles on the Shimura variety. But, so basically we can put this thing in the middle here. So uh, representations of L give vector bundles on the stack of GZIPs, and then we can pull back by zeta to get some vector bundles on SK, like this. And similarly here, we get the line bundle here, and we can pull back to get a, a line bundle on the flag space. And uh, the outside uh, diagram uh, is the exact, is the diagram that we had before. Okay. Um, all right, so now uh, I can speak about uh, partial Hessian variance in, in more uh, detail. Um, so, uh, so first of all, so for each co-dimension one uh, flag stratum uh, Z alpha, uh, there exists a partial Hessian variant H alpha on, uh, on GZIP flag mu. Okay, so uh, the partial Hessian variants, uh, they, they actually already exist. Uh, I mean, not only on the flag space of the Shimura variety, Actually, they exist group theoretically on, on, the, on the group theoretical uh, analog of the flag space. So, so they exist already here. And, and they are basically unique, but uh, there is only uh, some ambiguity by uh, taking powers, of course. Uh, we can take powers of uh, as invariant, it, it, the vanishing locus will, will remain the same. Um, and we can also multiply by some scalar, of course, and also we can multiply by a non-vanishing function, which is here in this case, it's a character of G, a non-vanishing function on this stack. It's the same thing, uh, I mean, uh, up to scalar. Okay, and uh, so uh, furthermore, um, it, uh, we may want to have uh, like multiplicity one. We have to, uh, some, some section that vanishing with with, that vanishes with multiplicity one. So in the, it, it is possible if we assume that the Picard group of G is, uh, is trivial, then in this case, we can have multiplicity one. Uh, so again, uh, let's define the C Hasse to be the, the cone uh, spanned 
over the non-negative rationals by, by uh, the weights of these uh, rational has invariants. And uh, so this is a, it is a completely well-defined. Uh, it doesn't depend on, on, on anything. Um, so, and also it is very explicit because so if we write phi to be uh, the Frobenius homomorphism of T, then uh, this Hasse cone is the image of the dominant uh, characters by the, the map H, where H is, uh, takes lambda to lambda minus W0 L lambda composed with uh, the Frobenius. Right, so, so this is a very, very explicit formula. Uh, here, uh, sorry, here W0L is the longest element in the, the vial group of, of L. Okay. Right. So, um, also, so another property of these uh, partial has invariants is, is the following. Um, so, so um, recall that in characteristic P, so the, the representation V of lambda, which was uh, the induced representation from lambda uh, from BL to L, is not always irreducible. Um, so, it, so it's so called, so called L, L of lambda uh, is the unique irreducible representation of highest weight lambda. Um, so uh, let's denote by V L of lambda uh, the sub vector bundle uh, of V of lambda, which uh, corresponds to the so called, which which um, which is attached to this uh, sub representation L of lambda. And let's say that an automorphic form of weight lambda is primitive if it's uh, a section of VL of lambda. Okay, so, so this is a, a, a slightly sensitive, uh, I mean, it's, um, um, it's, it, it is not stable by taking powers, for example. So it's a, it's a delicate uh, notion. Uh, being primitive is, a, is quite difficult to, sh to show. Um, and so we have the following theorem. So here we assume that P is defined over FP. Uh, so let's take some uh, some some simple root alpha, uh, and assume that there exists uh, some omega alpha, some character of t, which satisfy the following condition. So uh, first of all, uh, the scalar product of omega alpha with alpha check is positive and less than p, and omega alpha is orthogonal to all the other uh, simple roots. And secondly, uh, v of omega alpha and v of w z W zero L omega alpha are irreducible. Then there exists a partial Hasse invariance for the stratum Z alpha of highest weight. Uh, uh, sorry, of weight uh, age of omega alpha, which is a primitive automorphic form. So uh, just a, uh, a word on these conditions. So th these are not very restrictive because, um, so for example, uh, in the case of Ziegel uh, automorphic forms, we can take uh, omega alpha to be the fundamental weight. Of, of alpha, and so these these conditions are satisfied, and also for some some other groups as well, it is a uh, quite easy uh, easily satisfied. <clears throat> okay, so so basically we can obtain uh, automorph uh, so partial Hasse invariants which are primitive automorphic forms if if necessary. Uh, okay, so then uh, let's talk about uh, I want to introduce uh, uh, another cone which is called the zip cone. Uh, so uh, remember that. Uh, recall that there is this map uh, from SK tensor FP bar to the stack of G tips. So in particular, by pullback via zeta, we get an inclusion of the, the space uh, of global sections of V of lambda over, the, over G zip to uh, the space of automorphic forms of weight lambda, like this. Um, and so define C zip, the, the cone, uh, the zip cone, as the set of lambda uh, such that this subspace in, is non-zero. So uh, similarly, uh, as we defined the uh, CK of FP bar, uh, the, the cone where this was non-zero. Okay, so, so obviously um, we have the following inclusions. So first of all, uh, we define this Hasse cone as uh, the, the cone uh, spanned by all the weights of the, of the partial Hasse invariants. So since partial Hasse invariants exist on, on GZIP, uh, we obviously have an inclusion C Hasse contained in, in CZIP. Uh, and then uh, by this inclusion, uh, we, we have uh, that C zip is contained in CK of FP bar. And um, well, of course we have to take the, we have to pass to the, uh, rational, to, to the rational cones. Uh, and, and everything is contained in, in, the, in the L dominant 
characters because I uh, recall that if if the character is not L dominant, then everything is zero. V of lambda is zero, all all, all is zero. So so everything is contained in here. Um, and so uh, what we want to to study is uh, the generalization of Diamond and Cassay's result, which was that the Hasse cone uh, is equal to to this cone here, the, the CK of F bar, which is the the cone of all possible weights uh, of mod p uh, autom automorphic ones. Uh, but so we see here that for this result to generalize, it is necessary that the, the Hasse cone is equal uh, to, the, to the middle cone, which is this zip cone, right? Because, uh, well, obviously, for, for obvious reasons, this would not, uh, this is a necessary condition. Okay, so, so now this is only a group theory, basically, because uh, both both sides are, are defined in terms of group theory, so we can hope to settle this question. Um, okay, but so before uh, I do, uh, let me just uh, give you, um, right, so here this, we recall that we have this subspace of the space of automorphic forms, so the, the, um, the subspace uh, given by the stack of dzips, and we can actually give a very concrete um, description of this space, so I just wanted to mention it quickly. Um, so here, assume that uh, P is defined over FP, just to, to simplify uh, the statement, but this is not uh, necessary. Um, and also, we, we do not need to work with uh, only the, um, the induced representations V of lambda, we can work with any P representation. So let V uh, be a P representation. Um, so if we have some root alpha, um, such that, so the root group U alpha is contained in P. Um, we have an operator E alpha on, on V. So um, let me define it quickly. So here U alpha, we, we choose an isomorphism with a GA, uh, such that this gives a, a um, uh, I forgot the word. Uh, so so the, the, this is a, a classical choice of isomorphism, like in Janssen's book. Um, well, I, there is a term for this that I forgot. Um, and so uh, here, by taking the element one in GA, uh, well, we can um, view it in P, and 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 then uh, we can apply the representation, rho. So so we get uh, some some uh, automorphism of V. So this gives a, a operator E alpha, like this on V, and it has the property that it takes the the weight space uh, V new for some uh, uh, character new into uh, the direct sum over the over non-negative integers of v nu plus j alpha. Okay. And so in particular, we, we get a, a map e alpha j uh, given by composing e alpha, so um, e alpha with a, with a projection onto v uh, nu plus j alpha. Yes. So let's call this e alpha j. And so there is this, uh, Filtration defined by Brilinski and Constant, defined as follows. So, um, so the filtration on the weight space V nu um, for some real integer C, oh, sorry, so some real number C uh, is defined as follows. So it is the, the, the set of uh, the space, the subspace of uh, V nu, uh, which is uh, killed by um, all the uh, operators E alpha J for J uh, bigger than C. Okay. So, uh, and then C varies and this gives a, a filtration on, on V nu, uh, which is um, attached to alpha. Uh, and similarly, so then we can put all the alphas together see here. So, um, so we define another filtration fill P of chi, where chi is some, uh, some, character, some fixed character. Um, or maybe I should tensor with R here. Uh, so character of T tensor with R, uh, we, we get a, a filtration of v, v nu defined as follows. So we take the intersection over all um, simple roots uh, which are not in L uh, of this filtration here, but so, so there is a slight, um, um, so, so here we, we, take the, we take the filtration for alpha and C and the constant C here that we take is also depending on alpha. So this is kind of it mixes um, like it is a. It is not completely uh, obvious to see what this is, um, and and also let me give you one more definition. So let P um, be the uh, under the um, 
the uh, endomorphism of T given by uh, the length torsor, which maps T to T times phi of T minus one, where phi was the Frobenius. Uh, and uh, so P upper star is the pullback, which is uh, which maps some character lambda to lambda composed with uh, P. And so the, we have the following theorem. So the, the space uh, H0 uh, of G zip uh, of uh, V of rho, so the, the, um, the, the vector bundle attached to the representation rho is given as follows. So, so here, this part is basically this constant, um, this Bredinsky constant filtration. Uh, and it is intersected with the L of FP invariance. Okay. So, so this, this expresses the, the space of global sections as the L of FP invariant part of the uh, Brudinsky constant filtration. Okay. And so, and, 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 and this whole space is contained in the H0 of the Shimura variety of uh, VFRO. Okay. So the, the main result of this talk regarding the, the, the Hasset known is the following. Um, so um, we come back to, to the inclusions that uh, I had explained earlier. So uh, we have the Hasset cone containing the zip cone and containing this uh, uh, cone over FP bar. Um, also, that uh, may be noted by uh, sigma, the Frobenius acting on the characters of T and on the simple roots. Delta. So we have the following theorem. Um, so the Hasse cone is equal to the zip cone, which was this necessary condition that uh, we wanted to um, investigate. Uh, if and only if the two con following conditions hold. So first of all, L is defined over FP. And secondly, uh, the Frobenius acts on the simple roots of L by minus W0L. Here, note that so since L is defined over FP, we have an action of Frobenius on the simple roots, and also that minus W zero L acts on the on the simple roots. So if do, if those two actions coincide on on uh, delta L, then we have an equality of these two cones, um, if and only if actually. Um, and so in these cases, we can hope that the stronger result that actually all these three cones are equal. Uh, also holds, and uh, then perhaps also um, the, the other results mentioned by uh, Paimon in his talk uh, regarding the minimal cone uh, may also um, generalize in this setting. So, um, so okay. So let me give you some some examples of um, Shimura varieties that satisfy this condition. Uh, so. First of all, so in the previous papers with Goldring, we, we showed that actually the stronger um, equality holds in, in a few cases. Uh, so first of all, while well, there is the hilbert brumenthal case that uh, Simon talked about, um, so our, our method is, is completely different because it's related to, it's, uh, it uses the, the stratification on the, Shim on the Shimar variety to to get the result. And also it applies to other schemes, not only Shimura varieties, but other, other schemes as well. Um, so in this case, uh, L is equal to T. So uh, lambda L, uh, sorry, delta L is uh, empty. So obviously the condition holds here. Um, secondly, uh, Picard surfaces. So this is the case where uh, G is, um, is a unitary group, um, signature two, one uh, at infinity. Uh, and P is a split prime, okay? So if we look at uh, the mod P reduction, um, then L is isomorphic to GL2 FP, um, and uh, sigma is, uh, so sigma, the action of Frobenius is trivial, uh, and so is the, the action of minus W0 L uh, on delta L, and uh, so, uh, so here the condition holds, and so again, we prove that the stronger equality holds also in this case, and similarly for the Ziegel threefold. So this is the case when G is the, um, the group uh, GSP4. Also here the condition holds. Uh, and, but I should note that for two and three, uh, the result is conditional, conditional on a Kirchner principle for strata, um, which should follow from a result of Lan and Stroh. But so, um, so what we actually prove is a, a similar result for schemes, um, so, that satisfy a Kirchhoff principle. Any scheme that, that will um, satisfy this kind of 
uh, property uh, will um, will will give uh, this kind of results, but so we don't know if Shimar varieties uh, do satisfy. Uh, but but I think it, it should follow from our national state. Um, okay, and uh, also another family of examples is the the Shimura varieties attached to spin groups. So uh, if you take G spin uh, two two n minus one, uh, so this infinite family of, of uh, Shimura varieties satisfies um, these two conditions. L is defined over F p and sigma acts on on the delta L by minus W zero L. And so again, so this we have not explored, but we can hope that the results of M and, and um, of them um, <coughs> and Casse uh, hold these Shimura varieties as well. Okay, so let me also give you some, some counterexamples. <coughs> so again, uh, consider the, the PK surface, uh, same as before, but uh, this time take an inert time P. So in, in this case, uh, P is no longer defined over FP, or L, L is not no longer defined over, over FP, so the condition does not hold. And so we should have a, a cones which, are, which do not coincide. Uh, so in this case, uh, the the cardinality of the simple roots is two, so we have two partial, uh, two flag partial has invariants. So here they are. So uh, the first one has weight one minus p, minus p, and the second has weight one one minus p. Okay, and so here you can see. So the has a cone is a cone spanned by these two weights. Um, but so we, so we also have this mu ordinary has invariant that I talked about. So. This is an example where the mu ordinary Hasse invariant has, has nothing to do with this flat partial Hasse invariants, basically. It, it is not even spanned by, by them. Like, uh, so in the, in the case of uh, Feynman stock, um, basically this, mu, this Hasse invariant was the product of these two things. Right? It was the product of these two Hasse invariants, but here it has really nothing to do with it. Completely, completely different. Uh, so this has weight one minus p squared, one minus p squared. Um, and so you can see that so um, it, it goes up, it is outside of this Hasse cone. So, um, but so still in this example, it is uh, quite quite easy to to see. So for example, the the zip cone is 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 this cone like the the cone generated by uh, this guy and uh, and this this um, one of the flag partial Hasse invariant. So it is it's quite easy, right? Um, however, if we go to the next example, um, so this. Um, the case of the Ziegel Schumer variety for um, for uh, G equals uh, SP6, uh, GSP6. So it's a uh, Schumer variety with parameterizes uh, three dimensional abelian varieties. Um, so then uh, P is defined over FP, L, L is defined over FP, so that's okay. But however, the, the action of sigma and minus W0L do not coincide on the, on the simple roots of L. Because uh, sigma is trivial and this is not trivial. Um, so here, um, the, the number of simple roots is three. So we have three partial Hasse invariants. <coughs> so here they are. So actually, in this example, so the the ordinary uh, Hasse invariant, which is here with the weight one minus p, one minus p, one minus p, is actually one of the flag partial Hasse invariants contrary to the previous examples. So here, it is one, one of the three. So the three partial Hasse invariants are here. So one, zero, minus p, one, one minus p, minus p, and one minus p, one minus p, one minus p. So this is um, the, the, the cone uh, spanned by, by these three weights. So maybe I should note, um, because I, so I didn't explain it, that so this cone, in this case, is three-dimensional. So <laughs> I should have said this in the in the in the beginning, but so in order to to draw it, I, I took a slice of the cone, and so that's why we get a picture in two dimensions. Um, and so these these two lines here, they they represent the the basically the the hyperplanes that define the L dominant cone, because um, recall that everything is is contained in the L dominant cone. So in this case, it is the triples a one bigger than a two bigger than a three. So this this uh, half line here is the um, corresponds to a one equals a two, and this half line corresponds to a two equals a three. <coughs> and okay, so we have these uh, these three weights, but so 
here we see that uh, the so the zip cone um, is actually much bigger. It's it's uh, generated by these other funny weights here: one one minus p squared plus p and p plus one minus p squared minus p squared. And so if we want to um, generalize further um, um, Diamond um, Cassay's results, uh, maybe um, the Hasse cone is no longer the right cone. Um, and maybe we should incorporate um, this kind of automorphic forms. Like, um, so uh, this is, a, this is uh, speculative because I, I don't really know um, what, what happens. Uh, but we see on this example that some other uh, automorphic forms show up. And, um, <coughs> and, and also that um, here it is generated by four, uh, by four weights uh, instead of the three weights of the Hasse cone. Uh, also, in this picture, uh, I, I marked a, a dotted uh, line here. So, so this represents uh, what happens in characteristic zero. So this was the standard cone uh, that was defined yesterday. So basically what happens in, in, uh, over the complex numbers. So, so if you look at this triangle here, these are the, the possible weights of uh, automorphic forms in characteristic zero which is quite, quite different than what, what you get in, in characteristic. Okay, so that's basically the end of the talk. So uh, thank you, thank you for everyone. I'll stop here. Uh, thank you very much for the excellent talk. Um, feel free to uh, use the, well, participants feel free to use the, the clap button to show your uh, appreciation. And, If you uh, have any questions, please raise your hand or um, send me a message to let me know. Hey, um, maybe I can ask a question. Please. Uh, yes. So uh, at some point you mentioned the notion of a primitive a form being primitive. Yes. Can you explain a little bit what's the significance of this uh, definition? Um, yeah. So this is a. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if this is a um, something uh, that uh, will end up being uh, useful, but uh, well. Um, so, so it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a natural question. Um, like, um, especially in, in this, um, in the, in this setting where we want to have like uh, a set of, uh, automorphic forms that span, uh, everything, all the possible automorphic, um, weights. Um, and so definitely you would, you would expect something like this. If you had like a set of generators of these weights, you would expect them to be as, um, Basically, as reduced as possible, so they would be as as um, like in this in this irreducible part of the of the representation via plumda, uh, which is uh, the socal of the of the representation. So that's and and this that we we were able to prove this, and so this indicates that um, maybe uh, the result of uh, diamond and and, and Kasse is. Uh, it's reasonable to expect that it could uh, uh, extend um, because of this this property. So, but it's not really. I don't. I don't really know if if it has some applications. Um, it's just that we in in the construction. Um, so we, we can give another construction of these partial Hasse invariants. Basically, I didn't explain it in this talk, uh, but there is a canonical decomposition of partial Hasse invariants. Um, which involves uh, vector bundles. Um, it, it's, um, it's, it's not really complicated, but um, a, a bit technical. Uh, and, um, and so this is how we prove it. So the, the, there is some, some, some decomposition that, um, that can be completely, that is completely canonical. Um, 
and 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 it implies this result. So uh, this is the way to prove it. But about the significance, um, yeah, I, I'm not yet sure, but uh, but it, it may be useful in in uh, later, and and it's certainly an indication that these are useful useful objects. I think. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I had a question. Can I ask? Yeah, sure. Right, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, for the Hussein variants on the Shimura variety, mm -hmm. uh, very roughly you can construct them, or at least in cases that I understand, uh, studying the combinatorics of Shibung on pieces of the hot bundle, so to speak. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Can you? Can, yeah. Can you say the same thing for these uh, flag housing variants? Or are they related yes. to Vershibung on, on the level yes. of the flag variety? Can you explain yes, it yes, a little yes. bit? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is um, basically uh, the construction. So so the flag space uh, parameterizes um, flags, uh, as uh, the name indicates. Um, and so, um, so what you do is, uh, so again, so you, you use this uh, the Verschiebung to, um, so for example, uh, let's have a flag F1, F2 in omega. Okay, so you have zero containing F1, containing F2, containing omega. Like this, we have this flag. Mm -hmm. and, and you have the Verschiebung, and you can use it to, um, so for example, you go from F1, uh, then you apply Verschiebung, uh, and so you, you land in omega, uh, twisted by Frobenius, uh, twisted by P, omega P, like this. Mm -hmm. and, and then you can go to omega divided by, uh, by F2. So you go to F1, and then you apply Verschiebung, and then you go to omega divided by F2. So you see, so it, it's completely given by, okay. it is completely given by the filtration. Um, okay. So, and, and the action of Verschiebung. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if, if I can ask, so it, at least uh, superficially, it, the, it looks like there's a resemblance between flag partial Hasse invariance and the Reduci Chow partial Hasse invariance in the case mm -hmm. of a ramified, um, in the case where, where P is ramified in a totally real field in the yeah. modular case. Is there oh. any common generalization of these? So, uh, yeah, so the, the thing that uh, I, I'm not competent uh, about the ramified case, but I know that uh, um, I, I think uh, Paul Ziegler mentioned to me that he had some ideas. Uh, maybe I, I'm not sure uh, he's uh, attending. I don't know. Um, if he is, uh, I think he should, <laughs> should uh, speak uh, instead. Uh, but he, I think he has some ideas uh, about uh, extending um, stack of uh, gzip in the ramified case. So uh, in the, in this talk, everything was non-ramified, was a good reduction. Uh, but in the, also in the ramified setting, it's um, maybe possible to do it. And so in this case, you would have a group theoretical way to approach this question. You would have like a, you you could use group theory basically to to study the, all the questions about uh, partial Hassan variance, Hassan variance, everything. You would just study uh, reductive groups basically, and you would uh, you would prove results like this, which is very convenient. And th so that's why, for example, in this case, we were able to uh, to prove a general result for any groups because we are basically doing group theory. So it's very simple compared to what you would do on a Shimura variety, which is like it's a much more complicated object. So this was a uh, yeah. So that's how. Uh, so I so maybe the ramified case is possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't see any other uh, questions or hands raised. So let's thank Jean Stefan again. Thank you. And uh, we can end the recording.